tonight on E! News at 6. The Olympic torch relay had a wintry trip around Georgian Bay. I'll show you some of the stops in Meaford, Thornbury, Collingwood, and Wasaga Beach. There are new questions tonight surrounding the torch run following an incident in Guelph yesterday. Tonight we find out if any new security measures are being taken. This is A News at 6. Floating above a sea of cheering well-wishers, the Olympic flame draws a crowd as it begins its route through Simcoe County to today's final stop at Barry City Hall. And tonight, an enthusiastic crowd is gathering at Barry's Circle in the center where the cauldron awaits the final transfer today of the Olympic flame. Good evening. Tonight, we have special extended live coverage of day 61 of the Olympic torch relay leading up to the 2010 Winter Games in Vancouver. The torch began the day in Owen Sound and will soon begin the final leg of the day, which will take it through the city of Barrie. That final leg starts in about 15 minutes' time on Essa Road near Ann Street. The torch continues down Essa to Tiffin Street, then onto Lakeshore Drive. It will turn left onto Victoria Street, up to Bradford. Next, it's Dunlop Street for a trip through downtown before it loops around Point Street to Collier and to the big celebration awaiting at City Hall. We have the route covered all the way along with Rob Cooper. He's live on Lakeshore Drive at Centennial Park. Julia Burke is on Dunlop Street near Memorial Square. And Jackie Crandall's is standing by live with the crowds at City Hall. Jackie? Lance, all eyes are on the stage. The party down here at City Hall well underway. Hundreds of people have already shown up. We've got tons of local talent on the stage all night long, right through until 8 o'clock. Musicians, dancers, singers. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you plan to come down, bundle up, because it's also going to be cool. Crews are expecting somewhere close to 40,000 people. So keep in mind all those road restrictions. And bring along a donation for the Grocery Assistance Program. If you bring something along, you get a free hot chocolate. And you'll certainly need it to keep you warm. We'll be back in touch here from City Hall in just a few moments. We'll send it back to you, Lance, in the newsroom. All right, thank you, Jackie. And Julia Burke is on Dunlop Street, as she said, where people in the heart of the downtown will watch the torch relay. Go by there. Julia? Well, Lance, you can really start to feel the electricity in the air right now. A lot of families are coming out in anticipation of catching a glimpse of what really has become one of the more prolific symbols in all of Canada right now, the Olympic torch. It's such an idyllic setting here. We've got a light snow falling, snow on the ground. The streets are decorated for the holidays. It's cold, but if you're dressed for it, it's fabulous. The Fabry family, come on over, guys. They're dressed for it, and they happen to get a hot chocolate on the way over here. Um, guys, I'm you're here tonight you from a for a big moment. Tell me why you came down here tonight. Well, we've never been part of the uh, running of the torch. I've never seen it myself live. And uh, I think it's pretty exciting. Our daughter is singing in the uh, choir. She's going to be right. singing the national anthem. So we're excited to see that. Oh, very proud moment for you. Absolutely. And mom, how about you? What's the meaning in the torch for you? Uh, it's all about being a Canadian. Mm -hmm. a special moment you're not going to see very often. And really quickly, I understand one of the torch bearers you met at school, Mr. Bob Middlemiss. Yeah. How was that? Okay. Are you looking forward to seeing him tonight lighting the cauldron? Sort of. Sort of. I think he means yeah, right, Mom and Dad? Yeah. Have a great time tonight, guys. Um, bundle up once again. Great feeling here in downtown Barrie as we get ready for the torch to pass on by us. Back to you, Lance. All right, Julie, thanks very much. Rob Cooper is live on Lakeshore Drive uh, on the Barrie waterfront. Rob, yesterday in Guelph, as you know, a, a protester uh, knocked over one of the torch runners. So uh, has security been adjusted at all today? Yeah, no significant changes to this point, Lance, but certainly yesterday's incident on everybody's mind tonight. Many people certainly keeping an extra eye out just in case this evening. I did have an opportunity to speak with members of the Olympic Committee this afternoon. They tell me they're not going to allow one single incident to ruin what has really been a fantastic time for the entire country. Hundreds of people line the streets of downtown Elmville to catch a glimpse of Olympic history. For many, this is as close as they will ever get to the Olympic flame. Peter Scala is taking it all in. 90% of the population of Canada have the opportunity to see it. I think that's what's tremendous, to be able to really get the average guy who in there who, I'm not going to make it to Vancouver, most of us aren't, so this is our chance to be a part of it. And... Getting so close to the flame is what makes the moment special for so many Canadians. But yesterday in Guelph, a group of about 30 protesters interrupted the torch relay 
Torch runner Courtney Hansen was knocked to the ground by a protester, but was able to keep the flame going and even finished her leg of the run. A 19-year-old woman is facing an assault charge. Jim Richards is in charge of the torch relay for the Olympic Committee. He says no significant changes will be made to security as a result of the incident. Right now, at least four security people are with the flame at all times. What happened yesterday has not changed our approach whatsoever to our security, our planning. We're not going to compromise that intimacy we're looking to create with the citizens of communities all across the country. <laughs> Richard says they expect more protests as the torch continues its tour of the country, but is asking people to demonstrate peacefully and not interfere with the runners. Heidi Langman will carry the torch in Thunder Bay next week. She was disappointed to hear of the incident in Guelph. And I mean, this is something that brings our country together and kind of gives you a sense of national unity, and to see that happen is too bad, for sure. You want to hear it, Alex? We spoke with torch runner Jason Harris just moments before it was his turn to carry the flame. Harris refuses to let it ruin his moment. Not too worried about it. You know what? The RCMP knows what they're doing. Things happen, and what are you going to do? All right, we're back live along Lakeshore now here in downtown Barrie, where you can see people are starting to arrive with their hot chocolate or coffees in hand, many holding flags, getting all set to celebrate a little Canadiana this, uh, this evening. And you can see this sticker right here on this lamppost, 132, the orange sticker for Vancouver 2010. That means this is a transfer spot. So we have a perfect location for you this evening where we'll actually see a torch runner hand off to another torch runner. Be careful walking. We're going to slowly, gingerly walk along the ice. And this is Dave Fox snapping pictures of us walking up to him. Dave, good evening to you, sir. Okay. Born in 1988, the year, of course, Calgary had the Olympics in Canada. What does this mean for you as far as, once again, coming back to Canada, the Olympic Games in Vancouver this year? Oh, it means a lot. And to see the torch go right through my hometown is pretty memorable. Eh? Do you have a perhaps a, a favorite winter sport when it comes to the Winter Olympics? In Canada, it's hockey. Hockey. Of course. <laughs> Anything other than hockey? No, no, just oh, hockey. Yeah, true hockey. Fan. Yep. Appreciate you talking to us, yep. sir. Thanks for your time. Dave Fox and his mom down here enjoying what is just going to be a fantastic night. Again, we're along Lakeshore. Uh, well, for the remainder of the hour as we anticipate the arrival of that flame lance, we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that it arrives shortly. All right, Rob, thanks very much. Uh, we don't know about shortly. The, the torch is about two or three minutes uh, behind schedule, which will put it at Rob's location in roughly 15 minutes from now or so. That depends on a bunch of factors, of course, and we'll monitor that for you throughout the hour. As we mentioned, uh, we are close to the end of a long day for the torch relay crew. They made a number of local stops today, including one this afternoon in Midland. <laughs> Thousands looked on as Midland Police Sergeant Doug Jeffro slit the cauldron there today. Thousands lining the streets of the Georgian Bay town. And our Trina Moss was there. She'll tell us all about the events in Midland in just a few minutes. And prior to that, the flame was carried through Collingwood, where very cold and snowy conditions, as you can see clearly, did not keep the crowds away. And a bit later, Roger Klein will show us how the relay began today, even before the sun came up. And of course, the torch has already covered a lot of ground, including this trip through Parliament, where both sides of the house were briefly united. Casey Colby will trace the 45,000 kilometer route from sea to sea to sea on the way to Vancouver 2010. But right now, we'll head it back downtown, downtown Barrie, that is, Julia Burke is on Dunlop Street. Julia? Thanks a lot, uh, Lance. And a lot of you people may recognize this person, or at least his voice. Tim Hi, Lanson. Julia. Hi, there. Hi. I'm Rock 95. And you have the honor of carrying the torch tomorrow. You're a torch runner. How did you get so lucky? I applied to the RBC website, and I asked if I could bear the torch because I thought it was one of the great, incredible things that bonds this country and supports our great athletes. So I wanted to be part of it. So they assigned me Gravenhurst tomorrow morning at the Opera House. I'm very excited about Julie. Oh, I bet you are. Yeah. 300 meters carrying that. That's now, have you right. done anything to prepare, any training for this big moment? I've been to the bar a couple of times, but no, not really, not really oh, too bar. much. Yeah. 
lifting something up. That's right. I mean, right. the gym to the yeah. But you know what? Uh, to me, it's just uh, I'm very excited. My friends are going to be there, and, right. and I get a chance to. I, I think it's just a great way of putting all of Canada together. It's such an exciting moment. You we don't really realize it until it's about upon us. Is that doesn't it feel that way? Exactly. You know, I keep hearing that uh, 4,000 people are expected at different events throughout Canada at the different torch run uh, events going on, and 40, 50,000 people are showing up. So it goes to show you how much we're supporting our wonderful.